Well, good afternoon, everyone, and a very warm welcome to the final of EuroQuiz 2015. I'm glad today I remembered to sit down because sometimes I forget and then everyone doesn't know to take their seats. So, well done taking your seats. Um, my name is Elaine Smith and as the Deputy Presiding Officer, it really is a great pleasure to welcome you all to the Scottish Parliament this afternoon. Today, seated at these desks, which are normally occupied by our members of the Scottish Parliament, are finalists drawn from primary schools all over Scotland, including a team on this occasion from my own constituency. All the teams here have done so well to get through the heats and to achieve a place in today's final. So congratulations to all of you for making it through here to the Scottish Parliament today. And can I also offer uh, a warm welcome to everyone in the public galleries, that's friends, teachers, parents and family. You're all very welcome to here in your Scottish Parliament today. I'm really delighted that EuroQuiz has uh, once again returned to Holyrood and this, I was trying to work it out, but we worked it out that this is my third time as Quizmaster and, all, and as always it's great to see this invasion of primary six pupils and especially so since um, some of you, I think most of you, have brought along some lovely brightly coloured and different kinds of mascots. So welcome also to the mascots today. As you'll notice, here I have uh, my own lucky mascot. My mascot's called Harry. He's the Scottish Parliament bear. And he's here to make sure, or to hopefully ensure, that I don't make too many mistakes as the quiz master today. So that's Harry, my mascot. Um, can I also offer a special thanks to everyone at the Scottish European Educational Trust for their efforts in ensuring the ongoing success of this absolutely excellent competition because we wouldn't be here without them. So thank you very much to them. And we're honoured to be joined by the head of the European Parliament's office in Scotland, Per Johansson, who you've all already met, I believe, this morning. And I'm very pleased to say that Per will be lending me his assistance throughout today's final. So while I've got the relatively easy task of asking the questions, it's going to fall to Per to explain the answers uh, while each round's question sheets are being marked. And I'm very pleased it's Per that's doing that and not me. Um, I also noticed when I was reading over my notes that one of the rounds is a language round where you've all got to listen really carefully to the phrases that will be spoken in German, French, Italian and Spanish. And luckily for all of you, it will not be me saying those phrases because my language skills really aren't good enough for that. So happily for you, it's someone else who does have the language skills. Um, this EuroQuiz final is also being watched live not to put any pressure on any of you, I'm sure you already know that. Uh, it's on our webcast, and that means that in classrooms around the country, maybe your own schools, maybe even other schools around the country, uh, they can watch the proceedings on, uh, on televisions or webcasts. So can I also say a, a, a big hello to all of the people out there, the young people out there and teachers, etc., who will be watching it from webcasts. And I hope you all get behind your classmates who are here in the chamber and a very warm welcome to everyone from everybody here in the, the parliament today. I really hope that today's quiz goes smoothly, unlike the last time that I was the quiz master. I know it wasn't because I got pronunciation wrong or anything, it was because a fire alarm went off and we had to all evacuate the building and that meant that the quiz took a bit longer than it should have. Happily everyone was safe and sound though, but I hope nothing like that happens today. So finally, I want to wish all of you uh, here today, all of you finalists, the very best of luck. And if you're attempting the quiz in your classroom or indeed uh, in the public gallery, then uh, I hope you all have an enjoyable day and the best of luck to you too. Thank you all very much. Now, can I, having uh, just welcomed you all officially, can I also individually welcome all our schools today to the Parliament? So 
When I say your name, I would like you, uh, please, to wave for the cameras. And if you have mascots, which I think many of you do, then uh, someone could also wave the mascot if you like. So, can I have the... Thank you. And I believe we will be starting on my left. And we will be welcoming St Mary's Duntoker from Western Bartonshire. <laughs> And for number two, we are welcoming, I'm going to get this right, Albin School from Aberdeen City. <laughs> and school number three is Alloway Primary School from South Ayrshire. Number four is Busby Primary School from East Renfrewshire. <laughs> and next we have Carmondine Primary School from West Lothian. <laughs> uh, Crown Primary School from Highland. <laughs> Kinnaird from... I'm oh, sorry... I'm a bit blank here on where Kinnaird is from. Where are you, Kinnaird? Give us a wee wave. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> and that brings us then to a school that I know where they're from, and it's Kirkshaw's Primary School from Coatbridge in North Lanarkshire. <laughs> and then we come to... Kern Primary School from Argyllan Butte. <laughs> Excuse me a wee second, I'm being whispered to. Thank you. And then we come to Last Wage from Midlothian. <laughs> uh, Lochside from Angus. Loretto from East Lothian. <laughs> Melrose from the Scottish Borders. <laughs> Mellow Forest from Aberdeenshire. <laughs> Mulgai from East Bartonshire. <laughs> and Nether Robertland from East Ayrshire. Notre Dame from Glasgow. <laughs> Pitt and Creef from Fife. <laughs> Portmock from Perth and Kinross. <laughs> Skull and Rova, Rova from the Western Isles. <laughs> Sound from the Shetland Islands Council. Uh, St George's School for Girls, Edinburgh. <laughs> St John's Primary from Inverclyde. <laughs> St Leonard's from South Lanarkshire. <laughs> uh, St Margaret's from Fife. <laughs> St Mary's from Dundee. St Michael's from Dumfries and Galloway. <laughs> St Sylvester's from Murray. <laughs> Wallace Primary School from Renfrewshire. <laughs> and last but certainly not least, West Cobride Primary School from North Ayrshire. <laughs> so, a very warm welcome. To all of you once again. Now, it gives me some pleasure to read out a message from President Schultz, President of the European Parliament. So this is an important uh, message to you all. And President Schultz says, my warmest congratulations to all the finalists in this year's Euro Quiz. The European Parliament is delighted to have the pleasure of supporting this great initiative. I'm delighted that you, the citizens of the future, 
are learning so actively about your European neighbours and how the European Union is governed. The European Parliament is always interested to hear the viewpoints of younger citizens, and it is here to represent every European citizen, especially you, who will be responsible for shaping the future of Europe. Good luck in the final. And I also have uh, an important message for you from Dr Alistair Allen, MSP, who is the Minister in this Parliament for Learning, Science and Scotland's Languages. Dr Allen says, We want Scotland to be better connected to the world, so learning about the people, language and rich culture of our fellow Europeans will help us celebrate the wonderful diversity afforded by these connections. The exciting opportunity which Euroquiz offers you will, I am sure, prompt your curiosity to learn more about the culture and language of countries beyond Europe. We believe that language learning makes a significant contribution to your development as active global citizens. So we are committed to making language learning normal for all our young people. I would like to congratulate you all. Getting to the final stage of the competition is something that you should be very proud of. So that's a message from Dr Allen. And I'm not going to tell him if you don't that my language skills aren't quite as good as they should be. So we'll keep quiet about that. Thank you. It is now my great pleasure to invite Per Johansson, Head of the European Parliament Office in Scotland, to give an overview and an explanation of how the quiz is going to run. Per, please. Hello, everyone. My name is Per. Uh, I am the uh, representative of the European Parliament here in Scotland. So that man that you saw on the screen before, Martin Schulz, is my boss. So I agree with everything that he said. But, uh, of course, as I would, uh, but I also wanted to say on behalf of myself and of the European Parliament here in Scotland, uh, well done for reaching the final to all of you, and also well done to all of your uh, competitors that uh, took part in the, in the local heats that didn't, unfortunately, make it here today, but are hopefully sitting at home in their schools following this on the, on the web stream and doing the quiz to see if they can beat you here today. Who knows? Um, I would also like to say thank you to Elaine Smith, MSP, uh, who's our quizmaster for this final today. And also thank you to the Scottish Parliament uh, for allowing us uh, to host this event in this beautiful Scottish Parliament and in this beautiful debating chamber. It's actually the eighth year that the Euroquiz final is being hosted at the Scottish Parliament. And uh, we're very grateful to the Scottish Parliament corporate body to be able to uh, host this event in this beautiful chamber. And me, from the European Parliament, I also want to say that we are very, very, very uh, proud to be supporting and sponsoring the Euroquiz. But um, before we get going here, I just want to make sure that, A, you know how the quiz will run. I'm sure you're very well informed about that already, but I'll explain it anyway. Uh, but first, I want to make sure that you are actually ready for what's going to happen here. So, are you ready? Yeah. And are the parents, friends, and teachers in the galleries ready? Yeah. Well done. Then I think we are ready. Um, I just want to tell also the parents, uh, teachers and friends in the galleries that you do have answer sheets in your program so you can see how well you do in the quiz and compete as well against our finalists on the floor. Um, and I also want to tell you all again, as you probably know already, that this quiz is being webcast, so pr live basically streamed, so that all the schools, your schools and other schools and supporters can watch it online. So I would like to say a very, very warm welcome to everyone that is watching it online as well. How will we be doing this today then is the big question, of course. Um, today, this final is made up of three rounds in which you all will participate. We'll start with round one, which is 20 questions. These questions will be answered individually, and the points will be added up to give your team a score. And there is absolutely, and I repeat, absolutely no conferring between team members uh, during this round, round round one. Then we'll have round two, which is probably my favorite round, which is the language round. 
Um, there you have 15 questions for the teams. And during this round, it's, it's, it's a team round, you can discuss your, quest, your, your answers. The first questions are spoken language questions in German, Spanish, Italian, and French. Then you have five questions of general knowledge about languages. And these questions have been uh, developed in partnership with SILT, Scotland's National Centre for Languages, and have been recorded by students at Harriet Watts University in Edinburgh. After that, if we get so far, we will get to round three, which focuses on the EU. And this round has 20 questions and will be asking uh, you to work in pairs with the person sitting next to you. Points will be added up to give the total score for the team for this round. And after round three, I think we're all going to be quite tired, including the mascots. So uh, we will basically be taking a break uh, and, and looking out. But after each round, I will be also taking you through, personally, the correct answers uh, while the papers are being marked, basically. And the two teams that are in the lead after round three will then go forward to the final round after the break. Round four has 10 questions for teams, followed by the all, all, all important buzzer questions to decide the overall winning team of the Euroquiz of 2015. And if you look to the right of me from my side, you can see all the, the prizes that you can win. And the instructions will be repeated again, I should tell you, uh, before we start each round. So, since I now know that we are all ready, both on the floor, in the galleries, and at home, or in school, I suppose, I will now hand you back to our quiz master, so we can start the quiz. Good luck, everyone. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pierre. So, if you're all ready, we are going to begin. Please write the name of your school at the top and then listen carefully to the questions. Please try to spell as well as you can, but spelling is not going to count against you as long as the meaning of your answer is clear. Round one is going to be 20 individual multiple choice questions. And you need to remember that this is an individual round and so you must not discuss your answers with your team. I know it's tempting, but it's an individual round, so it's your own answers. I'm going to read the questions uh, and the possible answers out to you. I will ask each question twice, and I would like you to listen carefully because they will not be repeated after that. The question is also going to appear on the screen behind me. So, you can, so that you know exactly what you're being asked. So now, turn to the questions. Question number one. What is the capital city of Sweden? Is it A, Helsinki, B, Stockholm, or C, Copenhagen? What is the capital city of Sweden? A, Helsinki, B, Stockholm or C, Copenhagen? Question number two. This is the flag of which EU member state? Is it A, Finland, B, Estonia or C, Czech Republic? This is the flag of which EU member state? A, Finland, B, Estonia or C, Czech Republic? Republic. Okay. Question three. In which EU capital city would you find this historical landmark? Is it in A, Dublin, or B, Paris, or C, Luxembourg? In which EU capital city would you find this historical landmark? A Dublin, B Paris, or C Luxembourg? Question number four. Which EU member state 
issues this currency? Is it A, Romania, B, Bulgaria, C, Hungary? Which EU member state issues this currency? Is it A, Romania, B, Bulgaria, or C, Hungary? Question number five. Remembering that this is an individual round. Question number five. What is the name of the Roman wall which crosses northern England from Newcastle to Carlisle? Is it A, the Flodden Wall, B, Hadrian's Wall, or C, the Hedden Wall? What is the name of the Roman wall which crosses northern England from Newcastle to Carlisle? Is it A, the Flodden Wall, B, Hadrian's Wall, or C, the Hedden Wall? Question number six. Bratislava is the capital city of which EU member state? Is it A, Hungary, B, Bulgaria, or C, Slovakia? Bratislava is the capital city of which EU member state? A, Hungary, B, Bulgaria, or C, Slovakia? Question seven. What is the approximate population of Italy? Is it A, 60 million, B, 54 million, or C, 50 million? What is the approximate population of Italy? A, 60 million, B, 54 million, or C, 50 million? Question number eight. This is a number plate from which EU country? Is it A, Latvia, B, Lithuania, or C, Luxembourg? This is a number plate from which EU country? A, Latvia, B, Lithuania, or C, Luxembourg? Question number nine. This is the flag of which EU candidate country? Is it A, Serbia? B, Turkey or C, Montenegro? This is the flag of which EU candidate country? A, Serbia, B, Turkey or C, Montenegro? Question number 10. Which sea lies between Italy and Sardinia? Is it A, the Adriatic? Is it B, the Ionian? Or is it C, the Tyrrhenian. Which sea lies between Italy and Sardinia? A, the Adriatic, B, the Ionian, or C, the Tyrrhenian? Question number 11. In which EU capital city would you find the triple bridge Tromo Stovce? Is it A, Budapest, B, Ljubljana or C, Warsaw? In which EU capital city would you find the triple bridge Tromostovce? Is it A, Budapest, B, Ljubljana or C, Warsaw? Question number 12. Which EU member state issues this euro coin? A, Spain, B, Cyprus or C, Portugal. Which EU member state issues this euro coin? A, Spain, B, Cyprus or C, Portugal? Question number 13. What is the approximate population of Croatia? Is it A, 4.4 million, B, 7.6 million or C, 5.5 million? What is the approximate population of Croatia? A, 4.4 million, B, 7.6 million, or C, 5.5 million? Question number 14. Poros consists of two islands in which EU member state? Is it A, Italy, B, Croatia, or C, Greece? 
Comoros consists of two islands in which EU member state A Italy, B Croatia or C Greece. Question number 15. In which EU capital city would you find this building designed by Alvar Aalto? Is it A Helsinki, B Stockholm or C Copenhagen? In which EU capital city would you find this building designed by Alvar Aalto? A Helsinki, B Stockholm or C Copenhagen? Question number 16. Which of the following countries shares a land border with the Principality of Monaco? Is it A, Italy, B, Spain or C, France? Which of the following countries shares a land border with the Principality of Monaco? A, Italy, B, Spain or C, France? Question number 17. Where would you find Mount Olympus, which gave its name to the Olympic Games? Would you find it in A, Greece, or B, Italy, or C, Portugal? Where would you find Mount Olympus, which gave its name to the Olympic Games? A, Greece, B, Italy, or C, Portugal? Question number 18. Which landmark came to symbolise the reunification of East and West Germany after the fall of the Berlin Wall? Was it A, the Brandenburg Gate, Brandenburger Tor, or B, Berlin Cathedral, Berliner Dom, or C, Red City Hall, Rotis Rathos? Which landmark came to symbolise the reunification of East and West Germany after the fall of the Berlin Wall, the Brandenburg Gate, Brandenburger Tor, Berlin Cathedral, Berliner Dom, or Red City Hall, Rotis Rathaus? Not so sure about my pronunciation of those ones, but since you can all read them, I hope that's OK. Question number 19. Which breed of dog can be traced back to a region of Croatia? Is it A. Dachshund, B. Dalmatian or C. Doberman? Which breed of dog can be traced back to a region of Croatia? A. Dachshund, B. Dalmatian or C. Doberman? And the last question in this round, question number 20. Which river flows through the, rat, the, the Latvian capital, Riga. Is it A, the Dogeva, B, the Danube, or C, the Dnieper? Which river flows through the Latvian capital, Riga? A, the Dogeva, B, the Danube, or C, the Dnieper? And that is the end of the first round. Can I now ask the teachers who are doing the marking to collect in the answered papers? Make sure that your names, uh, the name is on the top of the answered papers, please.
check, do the teachers have all the papers collected in? There's no outstanding papers. No, good. Well, while, uh, while they're being marked, could I ask Pear to come to the lectern and please take us through all the answers, Pear. Thank you very much. Thank you, Elaine. Uh, well, thank you, uh, everyone, for being so concentrated and concentrating on your own answers in that first round. Was it difficult? I thought it was quite difficult. But uh, let's go through the, the, the questions and, and answers from the first round anyway, so we'll see how you did. And if you know the answer, please shout it out. Even if it's the wrong answer, we can check which one it is. OK, we'll go through the first round. Question one. This one I know very well because I'm Swedish. So if you got this wrong, hmm. What is the capital city of Sweden? Oh. Yes. And then question number two, Stockholm B is the answer, I should say as well. Uh, question number two, which is the flag of this? Well, which member state has this flag was the other question. And it is indeed Estonia. Question, uh, answer B. Question three, in which EU capital city would you found, find this historical landmark? And it was in? Ah, oh, it's a bit difficult there, yeah? Dublin. Answer A, Dublin is the answer. That one was quite difficult, I have to say. Question four. Which member state, EU member state, issues this currency? It was Bulgaria. And the clue is in the Cyrillic letters on the coins. They use a different alphabet than us in Bulgaria. Question number five. What is the name of the Roman wall which crosses northern England? Answer B, Hadrian's Wall is correct. Bratislava, question number six, is the capital city of each which EU member state? Slovakia, answer number C. This one I must say I would have struggled with, question number seven. What is the approximate population of Italy? Answer A, 60 million. And here's a difficult one as well. The number plate comes from which EU country? Question number eight. It could be one of the two, couldn't it? It was Lithuania. Answer B. And then we have a candidate country. The flag of which candidate country was on question number nine? Serbia. Answer A. And which sea lies between Italy and Sardinia? Question number 10. Answer C, the Tyranian Sea. Question 11. In which EU capital city would you find the triple bridge? Tromostovje. It's in Ljubljana. Answer B. A question 12 was another coin. This time it looked a bit different. And which EU member state has this euro coin? Answer C, Portugal. Well done, everyone. Another population question, question 13. What is the approximate population of Croatia? Answer A, 4.4 million. Question 14, the two islands of Poros are in Greece, answer C. Question 15, in which EU capital city would you found, find this Alvar Alto building? Answer A, Helsinki. 16, which country shares a land border with Monaco, not a sea border? Correct, France, C. 17, where would you find Mount Olympus, home of the gods? And I didn't even have to go through it. A, Greece is correct. Question 18, 
Which landmark came to symbolize the reunification of East and West Germany? It's the A, the Brandenburg Gate, Brandenburg Tor. 19. Which breed of dog can be traced back to a region of Croatia? That one is difficult. Easy. Dalmatian B. Last but not least, which river flows through the current presidency of the EU capital of Latvia, Riga? The Daugava A. Well done to everyone and good luck with the next round. Okay. We're going to get started, everyone. Quiet, please. So, well done to all of you. You certainly sounded as if you knew all of those answers, or certainly most of them. So, that's good. The next round is the language round. Can I check if the question papers are out? Every, anybody not have a question? Have a, um, a question paper? No, oh, right, everybody got it, that's good. So, this round involves 15 questions, and these are for teams, so you can discuss your answers. And the first 10 questions are spoken language questions in German, Spanish, Italian and French, and then they'll be followed by five general knowledge language questions in English. This is the round where I'm pleased that I'm not having to read out all of the possible answers. What I would like you to do just now is to write the name of your school at the top of your sheet. And for the first five questions, you're going to hear a short phrase which is spoken in German, Spanish, Italian and French. And you will be asked to identify what it means in English. So you'll be writing the answer on your sheet in English. And this will be repeated uh, in each language. After the second time, you'll be given a few moments to discuss the answer with your team and then write down what it means in English on your sheet. You can take notes while you're listening, but it is extremely important that we all remain completely silent while the voices are reading out the possible answers to you. So you can take notes, but you really should not be conferring at that point, not be talking to each other. So, let's get started if we're all ready. Round two. Question number one. What does this mean in English? The high stool. ¿Cómo te llamas? Come ti chiami? Comment t'appelles-tu? Ok, and here it is again. Wie heißt du? Comment te llamas? Come ti chiami? Comment t'appelles-tu? Okay, now if you want a minute to just have a quick confer in your teams before we move on to the next question. Remember, you're writing your answer in English. Just in case any of you are able to write it in all those other languages, we'll stick to English for the answers. Okay. So... Question number two. And again, what does this mean in English? Wo wohnst du? Donde vives? Dove abiti? Où habites tu? And again. Wo wohnst du? Donde vives? Wo 
Dove abiti? Où habites-tu? Okay, now you can have a little bit of a discussion with your team and write down the answer. Okay, okay. Question number three. What does this mean in English? Danke. Gracias. Grazie. Merci. And again. Danke. Gracias. Grazie. Merci. OK, a few moments to discuss your answer. Make sure you're agreed in your teams. Right, I think we're all ready for question number four. What does this mean in English? Wie alt bist du? ¿Cuántos años tienes? ¿Cuántos años hay? ¿Qué edad has tú? And once more. ¿Qué alt eres tú? ¿Cuántos años tienes? Quanti anni hai? Quel age as-tu? Ok, now you can confer with your team. Make sure that you all agree on the answer that you're writing down. Ok, I think we're all ready now to move to question five. What does this mean in English? Setzt euch. Sentaos. Siediti. Asseyez-vous. And again. Setzt euch. Sentaos. Siediti. Asseyez-vous. OK. A few moments to just confer with your teammates on that one. Okay, I think we're all ready to move on to the next set of questions in this round. You're now going to be asked five questions in English and you're going to hear the answer spoken in German, Spanish, Italian and French. Uh, the questions are also written on your answer sheet. So what we would like you to do in the, in, for these questions is to write down the answer to the question in English on your sheet. You can make notes at any time again, but it's extremely important that you remain completely silent whilst you're listening to the voices and to be fair to everyone so everyone can hear the voices reading out the answers. So, the first one in this part of the round is question number six, and the question is, what pet does Paula have? 
Ich heiße Paula. Ich mag Tiere und ich habe eine Katze zu Hause. Me llamo Paula. Me gustan los animales y tengo un gato en casa. Mi chiamo Paola. Mi piacciono gli animali e a casa ho un gatto. Je m'appelle Paula. J'aime les animaux et j'ai un chat chez moi. And again, what pet does Paula have? Ich heiße Paula. Ich mag Tiere und ich habe eine Katze zu Hause. Me llamo Paula. Me gustan los animales y tengo un gato en casa. Mi chiamo Paula. Mi piacciono gli animali e a casa ho un gatto. Je m'appelle Paula. J'aime les animaux et j'ai un chat chez moi. Okay, now you can chat for a moment and write down your answer. Right, question number seven. And the question is, in which month is Anna's birthday? Meine Cousine heißt Anna und ihr Geburtstag ist im Februar. Mi prima se llama Anna y su cumpleaños es en febrero. Mia cugina si chiama Anna e il suo compleanno è in febbraio. Ma cousine s'appelle Anna et son anniversaire est en février. And again, in which month is Anna's birthday? Meine Cousine heißt Anna und ihr Geburtstag ist im Februar. Mi prima se llama Anna y su cumpleaños es en febrero. Mia cugina si chiama Anna e il suo compleanno è in febbraio. Ma cousine s'appelle Anna et son anniversaire est en février. Ok, maintenant je vais vous confirmer. Make sure that at least the majority of you are agreed on the answer. Right then, we'll move on to question number eight. How many children are in class today? Heute sind 23 Kinder in der Klasse. Hoy hay 23 niños en la clase. Oggi in classe ci sono 23 bambini. Aujourd'hui, il y a 23 enfants en classe. Ok, and once again, how many children are in class today? Heute sind 23 Kinder in der Klasse. Hoy hay 23 niños en la clase. Oggi in classe ci sono 23 bambini. Aujourd'hui, il y a 23 enfants en classe. Ok, a few moments to confer. Hopefully everyone's arrived at an answer. Question number nine, and the question is, what time does the film start? Ich gehe heute Nachmittag ins Kino. Der Film fängt um halb drei an. Voy al cine esta tarde. La película comienza a las dos y media. Oggi pomeriggio vado al cinema. Il film comincia alle due e mezza. 
Je vais au cinéma cet après-midi. Le film commence à deux heures et demie. Ok, and once again, what time does the film start? Ich gehe heute Nachmittag ins Kino. Der Film fängt um halb drei an. Voy al cine esta tarde. La película comienza a las dos y media. Oggi pomeriggio vado al cinema. Il film comincia alle due e mezza. Je vais au cinéma cet après-midi. Le film commence à deux heures et demie. Ok, a few moments to talk to each other about this before we move on to the last question in this section. Okay, so question number 10. What does Maria do on Sundays? Am Dienstag spielt Maria Fußball, aber am Sonntag geht sie ins Schwimmbad. Los martes Maria juega al fútbol, pero los domingos va a la piscina. Il martedì Maria gioca a calcio, ma la domenica Va in piscina. Le mardi, Maria joue au football, mais le dimanche, elle va à la piscine. And once more, what does Maria do on Sundays? Am Dienstag spielt Maria Fußball, aber am Sonntag geht sie ins Schwimmbad. Los martes Maria juega al fútbol, pero los domingos va a la piscina. Il martedì Maria gioca a calcio, ma la domenica va in piscina. Le mardi, Maria joue au football, ma le dimanche, elle va à la piscine. Ok, have a little chat about that one. Okay, we're now going to move on to the final five questions in this round, and these are on general knowledge language questions, and they will be asked in English by me. I'm going to ask each question twice, so please listen carefully, because after that, they will not be repeated. So, question number 11. Name one European language which belongs to the Romance family. Name one European language which belongs to the Romance family. Question number 12. In which EU member state would you use the word farewell to say goodbye? In which EU member state would you use the word farewell to say goodbye? Question number 13. Which one of these words is of Czech origin? Is it A, internet, B, robot, or C, hotel. Which one of these words is of Czech origin? A, internet, B, robot, or C, hotel. Okay, and question number 14. Name one language originating in the UK, which is not an officially recognized language of the EU. 
So name one language originating in the United Kingdom which is not an officially recognised language of the EU. And the final question in this round is question number 15. What do Maltese people call their language? What do Maltese people call their language? OK, that's round two finished. And can I now ask the teachers who are doing the marking to collect in the answer papers for this round, please? Can I ask Per now to go through the answers with you, please? So now come the answers for the second round. How do you think this one was? Was it difficult? No. Yeah, uh, middle. I have to admit that uh, I don't speak all of these languages, but I, I do speak some. So I'll try to give you the questions and answers, but quite quickly this time. So you don't have to shout them out this time. So um, the first five was, what does this mean in English? Uh, wie heißt du in German means, what's your name? Question one. Question two, donde vives in Spanish means, where do you live? Question three, grazie in Italian means, thank you. Question four, quel âge as-tu in French means, how old are you? Question five, setzt euch in German means sit down. And then we come to the questions where you were asked about certain words. Um, and number six was question about what pet Paula has. And this in Spanish was un gato, a cat. Question seven was about the month of Anna's birthday. And in Italian, that was in febbraio, February. Question eight. In France, the question was, how many children are in the French class today? 23, 23. And then uh, it was, the, question nine was, what time does the film start? And in German, it was um halb drei, which is half past two in English. Question 10 was, what does Maria do on Sundays? And in Spanish, she went to la piscina, the swimming pool. And then we had the general language questions to finish it off. The romance family includes the following 
So one of these you could have answered languages, it's French, Italian, Portuguese, Romanian, or Spanish. One was enough, you didn't have to get them all. Uh, and then number 12 was the question, in which EU member state you would use the word farvel to say goodbye? And the answer is in Denmark. But you could also use farvel in Sweden. So I would also give a correct uh, answer to the ones that have said Sweden there. Which of these words is of Czech origin? And that was a robot. Question 14, one language uh, origi originating in the UK which is not an officially recognized language of the EU. And you have four alternatives. It's either Scottish Gaelic, Welsh, Cornish, or Scots. And the Maltese people finally, question 15, call their own language Malti. Well done everyone, and good luck with the next round. Thank you very much. That's going to take us into the next round, young people. Order, boys and girls. If I can't get to speak, we can't move on. And then we'll be here all day. So well done, everyone. And uh, I'm, pretty, I'm sure at this point in time, your scores are going to be really close, just from what you were all, the way you were reacting to the answers. Um, but we're not going to announce any individual scores at this stage because there's obviously still everything to play for in the next round. And this is now the all-important third round. And from this round, our finalists are going to emerge. This round focuses on the European Union. Can you all make sure you have a question paper? If you don't, then please put your hand up and someone will bring you one. Please write your name, uh, sorry, the name of your school at the top of your sheet. And I'm now going to move on with round three. Round three will be 20 questions and you need to answer this in pairs. And that means working with the person next to you. You need to listen to the question. And you can then discuss your answer. And one of you should write the answer on the answer sheet. So you maybe want to decide just now who's writing the answer on the answer sheet. And remember, you've not to let the other pair in your team or any other teams round about you hear what you're saying. As with all previous rounds, the question is going to be asked twice, so I need you to listen carefully, and the question will also appear on the screen behind me. So let's get started with round three in teams. Question number one, which European institution is directly elected by European citizens. Which European institution is directly elected by European citizens? Okay, question number two. Which was the most recent EU treaty? Was it A, the Treaty of Rome, B, the Treaty of Lisbon, or C, the Treaty of Amsterdam, which was the most recent EU treaty, Treaty of Rome, Treaty of Lisbon, or the Treaty of Amsterdam? Question number three. Name two EU member states which do not use the euro. Name two EU member states which do not use the euro. Question number four. In which year did the European Union win the Nobel Peace Prize? And it's a multiple choice question. You have A, 2010, B, 2012, or C, 2009. So, in which year did the European Union win the Nobel Peace Prize? 2010, 2012 or 2009? Question number five. 
which country currently holds the presidency of the Council of the European Union? Is it A, Latvia, B, Greece or C, Luxembourg? Which country currently holds the presidency of the Council of the European Union? Is it A, Latvia, B, Greece or C, Luxembourg? Question number six. How long does this presidency last? A, six months, B, one year or C, five years? So that refers to the presidency of the Council of the European Union. How long does this presidency last? Six months, one year or five years? Question number seven. In which year was the European Economic Community set up? Was it A, 1957, B, 1986 or C, 1973? In which year was the European Economic Community set up? A, 1957, B, 1986 or C, 1973? I think all of those years must seem a long time ago to you. Question number eight. The Schengen Agreement enabling freedom to travel is named after a town in which EU member state? Is it in A, Belgium, B, Luxembourg or C, Germany? The Schengen Agreement enabling freedom to travel is named after a town in which EU member state? A, Belgium, B, Luxembourg or C, Germany? Okay. Question number nine. What programme promoted by the EU allows students to study abroad? What programme promoted by the EU allows students to study abroad? So it's the name of the programme. Question number 10. What do you present in any EU member state to get medical treatment when you are abroad? Is it A, your passport, B, your European health insurance card, or C, your identity card? What do you present in any EU member state to get medical treatment when you are abroad? A, passport. B, European Health Insurance Card, or C, Identity Card? Question number 11. Approximately how many kilometres is Brussels from Edinburgh? Is it A, 755, B, 327, or C, 1,363. Approximately how many kilometres is Brussels from Edinburgh? A, 755, B, 327, or C, 1,363. Okay. Question number 12. What does the abbreviation MEP stand for? What does the abbreviation MEP stand for? Question number 13. Which EU institution is located in Frankfurt? Question 13. Which EU institution is located in Frankfurt? Moving on now to question number 14. Which EU treaty introduced the euro? Was it A, the Treaty of Paris, B, the Treaty of Lisbon, or C, the Treaty of Maastricht? Which EU treaty introduced the euro? A, the Treaty of Paris, B, 
B, the Treaty of Lisbon, or C, the Treaty of Maastricht? Question number 15. What is the current minimum age for UK citizens voting in the European elections? What is the current minimum age for UK citizens voting in the European elections? So if you don't know, you just have to take a guess. Question number 16. Which EU institution is responsible for upholding EU law? Which EU institution is responsible for upholding EU law? Question number 17. Name one country that joined the EU in 1986. One country that joined the EU in 1986. We're looking for the name of one country. Question number 18. Who is the most recently elected Prime Minister of Greece? And this is a multiple choice question. So is it A, Antonis Samaras? Is it B, Alexis Tsipras? Or is it C, Mariano Rajoy? Who is the most recently elected Prime Minister of Greece? A, Antonis Samaras? B, Alexis Tsipras? Or C, Mariano Rajoy? Question number 19. How many MEPs sit in the European Parliament? So we're looking for a number. How many MEPs sit in the European Parliament? And that's how many in total, not how many from the UK. So how many MEPs sit in the European Parliament. Question number 20, and this is your last question of this round. Albert Einstein was a celebrated scientist from which European country? Albert Einstein was a celebrated scientist from which European country? Okay, could I ask the teachers now to collect the papers, please? And while the teachers are collecting the papers, I'm going to invite Per Johansson again to take us through the answers. And once Per starts speaking, can I ask that you all give him the best of order so that you can hear what the answers are to the questions? Young people, could we have a little bit of quiet, please? Per's trying to speak to you and give you the answer. So I know you're all excited, but just a little bit of quiet. No one has an answer yet? Good. Then we can start. Uh, I will run through these quite quickly. For the multiple choice ones, please, please feel free to shout out the letter, if you remember, for the answer. Um, 20 questions. Question number one. My institution, the European Parliament is the directly elected European institution. The most recent EU treaty was the Treaty of B, Lisbon. Two member states that don't use the euro currently, it's two of the following countries, Bulgaria, Croatia, Czech Republic, Denmark, Hungary, 
Poland, Romania, Sweden, and the UK, the United Kingdom. The European Union won the Nobel Peace Prize, sorry, Nobel Peace Prize in 2012. And if you listened to the previous answer session, you might have heard this one. Which country currently holds the presidency of the Council of the European Union? That is Latvia, A. And that presidency lasts for six months at a time, A. Which year was the European Community set up? Question seven, that was in 1957. And Schengen, which lends its name to the Schengen Agreement, uh, freedom of travel, is a little place in Luxembourg, B. And the program that allows EU citizens or students to study abroad is called Erasmus, nowadays Erasmus Plus. And what do you have to take with you if you get ill when you're traveling abroad in the EU? You need to take your European Health Insurance Card B. And Edinburgh is about 755 kilometers A away from Brussels. Uh, the abbreviation MEP stands for Member of the European Parliament. The EU institution, which is based in Germany, in Frankfurt am Main, is the European Central Bank. And the EU treaty that introduced the euro is named after a town in Holland, the Netherlands, called Maastricht C. And the current, and I say current, minimum age for citizens of the United Kingdom when voting in European elections is 18. The EU institution based in Luxembourg uh, responsible for upholding EU law is the Court of Justice of the European Union. And the next question, 17, was name one country that joined the EU in 1986. There are two alternatives, one being Spain, the other one being Portugal. The most recently elected Prime Minister of Greece is Alexis Tsipras B. And currently, question 19, there are 751 members of the European Parliament. Albert Einstein, celebrated scientist, finally, comes from which country? Germany. Thank you very much, everyone. Well done. Okay, thank you. The end of the first three rounds. Now, I'm sure you'll all want to know your scores, but while the papers are being marked for the final time, we're going to have a short break, and the scores will be announced after that. So can you listen carefully to me just for a moment, please? If you want a drink of water, you can go to the back of the room where water is available. If you need to go to the toilet, then you go out through the door at the back of the chamber and the events assistance will help you uh, by telling you where the toilets are. Now, I need you all back in this chamber. and We're running slightly late, so I'm saying back in the chamber, ready to start by 2.40. You can see the time's on our clock, so I want you back here, please, at 2.40. And while we're waiting to resume the quiz, we're going to have a short video about our Europe film competition, which is another event which is run by the Scottish European Educational Trust for secondary school students, and that's going to be played for a short time. So, we're now having a short break. Thank you. The Scottish European Educational Trust is an independent charity which works to promote language learning and provide impartial education about Europe. Our activities target young people of all ages across Scotland. The Trust's two main projects are the EuroQuiz and the Our Europe Film Competition. The EuroQuiz is a European themed quiz for primary six pupils, which has grown from small beginnings to include more than 400 primary schools in Scotland today. 
EuroQuiz develops teamwork and communication skills, as well as building people's confidence. The project focuses on developing foreign language skills from an early age, and since 2012 has included a dedicated European language round. The project takes place across the country, with almost every local authority hosting a regional heat, and over 1,700 pupils taking part each year. The winning teams from each heat then come together for a grand final in the debating chamber of the Scottish Parliament. What is the capital city of Malta? Valletta. Valletta. Yes, Valletta is correct. Well done. <laughs> final question, and it may all come down to the final question. Quiche Lorraine, Tap Tatin and Ratatouille originate France. France. From which country? And the correct answer is France. Well done. The Our Europe Film Competition focuses on engaging secondary school pupils in exploring European issues in a creative way. Participants are asked to come up with a creative concept for a film, which communicates their chosen message to an audience of their peers. Pupils work in teams to produce these films, developing their project planning, problem solving and presentation skills. A key element is the compulsory requirement of including foreign language scenes within their film. I think the European Union is as gezeichnet, because our Länder in Frieden leben können. The European Union guarantees us auch unsere individuelle Freiheit in Europa. Deswegen kann ich in Spanien studieren. Teachers and pupils alike value this project as demonstrated by the increasing participation numbers, which more than double each year. Last year, more than 280 pupils entered to take part. It helps me improve uh, my languages and in particular my German, so that when my exchange partner came, I was able to speak to her more confidently and more fluently. I guess it made me a lot more confident as well. I've, I've chosen to study languages this year still and uh, next year I'm planning to go back to Germany uh, to do some work experience over there. So it really gave me a confidence with my German, I think. We as a sort of group learned a lot about the EU and how it actually helps us. Uh, we learned a lot about education and how pupils can move about through the European countries and help them learn different languages in them. Uh, we also learned about how it helps businesses uh, and how they can sort of move trade throughout countries more freely within the EU. The Scottish European Educational Trust focuses on engaging Scotland's young people in European issues. We recognise that education of a skilled, competitive workforce is essential for Scotland's future. Fostering an understanding of Europe and developing the abilities to communicate internationally is work which has to start now.
So, thank you all for coming back so quickly to the Chamber. We've been held up slightly again, but that always happens. We'll not worry about it. This is the moment, of course, that you've all been waiting for. Before I announce the names of the teams that will be going into the final round, and they'll be coming to join me at the front here for the final round, but before I do that, I really want to say how impressed I am with all the teams that are here today. You, you've done really, really well to get this far, and I want to congratulate all of you for coming here today. And I also understand, I'm told, that five teams today have got over 100, and that's very, very unusual. So this was a really exciting competition, and everyone has done very well. So congratulations to all of you. I think you should give yourself a round of applause. And the big announcement. So, I'm really pleased to announce that the two teams who are going into the final round are from West Lothian, Carmen Dean. <laughs> and from Western Bartonshire, St Mary's Duntoker. teams have clearly brought large fan clubs with them. Can I ask the finalists to please make their way to these seats in the, the front row of the chamber so we can begin the final round. Well done. That's important. OK, so this is the most exciting bit for me as the quiz master. Make sure I get this bit right. This round has 20 questions, and the first 10 questions are going to alternate between the two teams. If a team answers correctly, then they will win the point. But if a team answers incorrectly, the question will then be passed to the other team for a possible bonus point. So you're going to have to follow this very carefully. This will be followed then by 10 buzzer questions, and I'm going to monitor the amount of time allowed to answer the questions to try and ensure fairness. Per Johansson is going to keep the scores, and if I call you to speak, please wait for the red light on the microphone on the desk in front of you to light up. And it will help everyone if you do that so that they can hear your answer properly. Now, I don't know your names to call you to speak because you don't have your names in front of you. So it just has to be your, your school when you buzz and you'll know who you are. Um, so here we go. I'm going to move on to the buzzer questions. I'll just go over this again. There's going to be 10 questions for teams. Each question will be asked to both teams at the same time. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. That's wrong. Not moving to that at all. Mistake number one. We're still on uh, the first one, which is the 20 questions for the top two teams, 10 questions followed by 10 buzzer questions. So the first questions are going to alternate between, and if a team answers incorrectly, remember it'll be passed on to the other team for a possible bonus point. So the first question is going to go to team A. And you don't need to press your buzzer for this. The question is, what does the abbreviation EEC stand for? OK, do you want to answer someone? European Economic Community. Correct. Well done. The next question, question number two, is going to Team B. And the question is, what policy does the abbreviation CAP stand for? Common Agricultural Policy. Correct. Well done. So... Back to Team A. In which year did Poland join the EU? In which year did Poland join the EU? 2008. 
2004. Correct. Team B. In which year did Sweden join the EU? In which year did Sweden join the EU? Nineteen ninety-five. Well done. Correct. Back to Team A. Which is the longest river in the UK? Which is the longest river in the UK? Okay, we have an answer. The River Severn. Correct. Well done. Team B, which ocean lies to the west of Europe? Which ocean lies to the west of Europe? The Atlantic Ocean. Correct. Well done. Question number seven goes to Team A. The Kingdom of Arendelle in the film Frozen is inspired by which European country? Arendelle and Frozen. Which European country is it inspired by? Norway. It is. Team B. This is question eight. Schneewittchen is the German title of which well-known fairy tale? Schneewittchen, the German title of which well-known fairy tale? Okay, do we have an answer? Snow White. Correct. Team A, who is Scotland's only female MEP? Scotland's only female MEP is? Catherine Styler. Correct. And question 10, which is the last one in this section, Team B, who is the President of the European Parliament? President of the European Parliament. Martin Schulz. Well done. So, all ten answered correctly. <laughs> now, now we turn to the buzzer questions. And uh, there's going to be ten buzzer questions for the teams. Each question will be asked uh, at the same time to both teams and will be answered by the first team to buzz. So I'll ask the question. I'm only going to be asking it once. The first team to buzz uh, will be allowed to answer it. If they answer incorrectly, the question will be passed to the other team for a possible bonus point. If you press the buzzer, then uh, you must answer the question immediately. And there's no conferring once the buzzer has been pressed. So if you want to confer and talk to each other about it, you've got to do it before you press the buzzer. And I would ask you to speak clearly into the microphone when you're giving me the answer. Um, if the answer is correct, your team will get the point. But uh, if, it's slightly, uh, if it's slightly different, uh, then... Sorry, I'm not quite reading this. Uh, if it's incorrect, it will be passed over to the other team who may confer before answering. So, yes, yeah, so if it's slightly different, then the answer is not going to be correct. If it's incorrect, it'll be passed to the other team. And at that point, they can confer. So, buzzer questions. This is exciting bit, isn't it? You're all excited? Right. What is the capital city of Croatia? Team A. Zagreb. Correct. Question number 12. Which great empire did the writers Cicero and Virgil come from? Team A. Rome. Rome, Rome. I'm just checking with the answers. Are we given Rome? Yep. Yeah. The Roman Empire. Okay. Question 13. Are we ready? Penelope Cruz is an actress. Spain. <laughs> Can we hear that again? Did you say Spain? 
Somebody. Hi, well, I'm sorry, sorry, that's my fault. I think I'm going to have to do another question because the buzzer went and I heard the word Spain getting shouted out, but the buzzer that went was Team B. And I think clearly the answer came from Team A. Can I have some adjudication on this? But the buzzer didn't go. So I can't give, I can't give that to either team. Um, I'm just taking some advice on this. Per? D that's a fair way of dealing with it. Will that question will not be counted? Okay, that question is not to be counted because, unfortunately, the buzzer went. And when I did come to the other team, then uh, the answer had already been shouted. I can't deal with it. But please, I think we'll have to ask another question at the end, and we'll we'll pick another question, and we'll ask that at the end. Please don't do that. Do not shout out the answer unless I see which team has to answer the question. Okay. Oh, sorry, did you wish to say something? Um, buzzer buzzer don't make it working. They don't have a sound. Uh, your buzzer was working. You buzzed, but unfortunately, the answer was shouted out. I thought, well, will we get that checked just in case? Can I have someone technically come and check these buzzers, please? And your name is? <laughs> Thank you, Matthew. <laughs> Buzzers appear to be working. So, ready? Question 14. Which Scottish football team volunteered for McRae's battalion during the First World War? <laughs> team A. Rangers. Afraid not. So I pass that over to Team B, who can confer. Team B. Is it, is it Hearts? It is indeed. Yes. So that's a bonus point for Team B. OK, are we ready again? Question 15. In which country might you eat bulgur coffees and baklava? <coughs> Team B. Slovenia. Afraid not. That goes as a bonus question to Team A, who may confer. The Netherlands? Sadly not. The answer to that one is Turkey. Question number 16. Fingers on the buzzers. We all ready? Which two Mediterranean islands joined the EU in 2004? And I need both. Team A. Malta and Cyprus. Correct. Well done. Question number 17. Buzzers ready. What is the nationality of the 2014 Wimbledon champion Novak Djokovic? Team B. Serbian. Correct. Question number 18. Who discovered penicillin? Team B. Alexander Fleming. Correct. Question number 19. Which Danish author wrote The Little Mermaid? Team A. Hans Christian Andersen. Correct. And this is question 20, but it's actually only 19 because we had that little blip. So we're going to ask another one because of that. Monte Rosa, the second highest mountain in the Alps, lies between which two countries? Team A. Italy and France. Sorry, it's not. That passes over to Team B. Hurry up, please. Switzerland initially. Correct. And there's one more question here. Take it that's OK, Per. What one have you picked? 
Okay, thank you, Shady. Everybody organised. In which year did Martin Schulz become President of the European Parliament? Team A. Um, 2014. Sadly not. Team B, bonus point possibility. Okay, do we have an answer? 2012. Correct. So, that's the end of that round, I think. And, Per, have you been counting up the... Indicators mm -hmm. to come from the back and see if we all have the okay. same scores. Well, Which I trust that we have. It's we very exciting. See. So can you all just stay where you are just now and we'll verify the scores. OK, I need to hold you on suspense a moment longer because before I announce the results, I have to invite John Mulgrew, Chair of the Scottish European Educational Trust, to come down to the front, please. Um, and I'm going to come down and join you to announce the results and then we'll be there to present the prizes. Actually, have a winner. So, yes, could you tell me who they are? Exciting. Do we have this microphone? Can everybody hear me? Yes? Right, then. In third place, now remember, third place, we're not taking part in the buzzer round, but we do have a third place team, and that third place team are Alloway. going to give out uh, the medals for the third place team, okay? Now, I think it would just be too much uh, to announce second and then do medals and then announce first. So I'm just going to say what the results are and then we'll invite the team in second place to come up and then the team who have won to come up. So, in second place, St Mary's, St. Mary's Duntoker. Well done.
And that means that the overall winning team for the EuroQuiz 2015 is Carmen Dean. Okay, so can I now uh, ask your, your second team to come forward, please, and we'll give you your medals, and then we'll have the first team. Can we now have our winners up, please? Thank you, Carmen Dean. So once again, congratulations to our winners. I think they're getting sweets as well, which is always a good thing. <laughs> I'm sure they'll be enjoyable. Can I also say that um, the, the medals, prizes and the trophy were also joined for our winners today by uh, European School Books, donated £100 in book tokens for the winning school. So that's also been handed over for the winning school. So the scores were really, really close, um, but congratulations to our overall winners once again, Carmen Dean. Um, it's really been a fantastic afternoon, and I'll congratulate all of the teams who have taken part in such a wonderful event. Can I now ask John to come uh, to this lectern and to give us a, a vote of thanks for today, and I ask the school to take their seats again, the winning school. Thank you very much. And thank you, Deputy um, Presiding Officer. That was really great. Great to have you with us again um, this year. This is the eighth year that um, we've been in this, this chamber, which adds to, the, adds to the final. And to Per, thank you very much indeed. Excellent quiz master, Per. Thank you very much for what you did very well. When you think, uh, ladies and gentlemen and boys and girls, that 416 schools in Scotland, 416 schools right across Scotland participated this year in the EuroQuiz through the heats, which were run in 30 out of the 32 education authorities that there are in Scotland. And that means that the winners, 1,786 pupils participated 
and you rose to the top. So it's a very, very splendid achievement. Well done, and well done to the, to the runners-up. You may have thought that the Euro quiz began at um, one o'clock today, but I have to say it didn't. It actually began in a train from Glasgow to Edinburgh. I was traveling through in a train this morning to come here and suddenly was aware of the fact that all these young pupils traveling through to Edinburgh were trying out questions on each other. And uh, a couple sitting across from me on the train said, my goodness, the things that they know, they really are so clever. So there you are, I've been with the Euroquiz from first thing, Queen Street Station in Glasgow, through here to, through here to Edinburgh. And I just wanted to say that uh, in a few brief comments, that the depth of knowledge that you young people have of Europe is really quite outstanding. And with events in the next one, two, three years, where there will be major debates about Europe and our country's future in Europe, it's really good to have a basis of fact so that you, and through your school and your families, can contribute to that. So, well done, and we're pleased as an organization that the messages that we want to get through about Europe, information about Europe, are clearly getting through. And thank you for participating, and thank you for being such excellent contestants. The Euroquiz is organized by Sophie, who's sitting over here. And she's also assisted by Madeline, who's sitting here, and Heather, somewhere at the back. So um, thank you, thank you to them. And I must say that if it weren't for Pear, and his organization, who give us the sponsorship, we wouldn't have this quiz. So again, Per, we're really grateful to you and to the European Parliament. <laughs> and finally, let me thank all the teachers and the parents who are here the teachers who work so hard in schools. And when I go into schools and find out about what's happening in terms of the Euro quiz and how it's fitting in so neatly to the curriculum which is offered, if it weren't boys and girls for your teachers and in some schools, the parents who are participating, then you wouldn't be here. So thank you to all of you for your support. Thank you very much, John, and can I just then add my thanks and congratulations to everyone for your participation at this year's quiz. Uh, can I thank Jen Bell, who's sitting with me, and she's from the presiding officer's office. She's been helping me today, so maybe you could thank her as well. <laughs> and our events team from the Parliament and also our broadcasting assistants. So thank you to everyone. <laughs> I'd also like to start, uh, sorry, finish the way I started and thank all your maskets and thank my mascot, Harry, the Scottish Parliament Bear, who tried to keep me right. I think he succeeded mostly, maybe just had a little blip. So I hope uh, you've all enjoyed your EuroQuiz experience and your visit to Parliament. I'm now going to ask you if you would all like to join me on the steps of the garden lobby. We're going to have a big group photograph, so good luck to whoever's organising that one. But Hopefully you'll all join me and I will come and we'll try and do that. What you have to do is make your way to the back of the chamber, not right now, just in a minute, when the events assistants will be ready to assist you to the garden lobby. I would like you, please, to take all your belongings with you because um, you'll not be returning to the chamber and to let you know that certificates and goodie bags will be handed out to participants when you leave the building. Can I make one more final uh, little announcement which is, it's the first time I've chaired the quiz and there's a school from my own constituency so I'm asking Kitshaw's primary school if you could just stay back for a minute and we'll get 
a little constituency photograph. I hope nobody else minds that. And I'll join the rest of you on the steps of the garden lobby shortly. So well done to everyone. Hope you enjoyed your day and safe journey home.